Hello, my name is Wayupa Totsa. I come from Thailand. I was a professor at university for almost 40 years and now I'm retired and I'm a full-time storyteller. And what made you decide to become a storyteller? Well, first of all, it was a project that I uh, worked on in 1995, 95 to 98. Uh, I tried to engender pride in local cultural heritage, mm -hmm. language and folk tales and literature so that children will be proud of them and they will speak the local language and they will tell stories, their own stories. Oh, so speaking about children, how did you hear about this camp? Well, actually, uh, I'm a friend of Alicia Dongjuban, who's the director of the camp, and uh, she found that you know I could be helpful and useful in her camp, and so she uh, invited me, and I'm very happy to be back to Korea to tell stories and to work with the children. Oh, when you tell a story, how do you get ready? What do you do to get into character? Well, actually, uh, when I tell stories, I choose stories very well. A uh, story that touches my heart. And then uh, when I deliver, I deliver with my heart. And I know that the audience will receive the story with their hearts. And that's how the telling story or storytelling performance works. Oh, so you don't just tell a story with your mouth, you tell it with your heart. That's right. Oh. My name is Hans Lawrence. Uh, Do the Camp is um, trying to use storytelling as a uh, tool to teach Korean kids English. Mm. And um, since I'm not a native speaker, uh, I have the advantage that I can kind of show people, show the Koreans that it's actually possible to learn to speak somehow good English um, when you're not even a, not a, a native speaker. Yes. So, so you I'm get an to, example in a way. Yes, yeah, so you get to teach them the language and a little bit of your culture too, right? Yeah, because um, Alicia found this old myth actually and she said, well, we're going to do this. And I said, well, why not? Because it's kind of a, a very old and ancient myth. And since it is from, it's written down in some Icelandic scripts, oh. and um, of course you can you can change it a little bit so it becomes a story that's worthwhile telling because maybe in the old written form it's maybe you know mm -hmm. only interesting for people who lived like eight hundred, nine hundred years ago. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many years have you been telling stories? I think I've been telling stories for about uh, 35 years now. Wow. And what has your experience with the camp been so far? We have really moved far from shy teenagers who didn't dare to open their mouth, whispering kind of, to teenagers who are in, really engaged, ready to speak and and use himself in, in this little little story about. So in just a day or two, they've gone yeah. from being quiet and shy yeah. to speaking on the stage really yeah, confidently. It's, 20, it's actually 24 hours. We oh. started yesterday and, and uh, introducing ourselves and they didn't really, really speak very much. And they didn't know, know each other. They're coming from different schools also. Mm -hmm. So they didn't even know each other, which, which made it even a little bit more difficult because they had to yeah, get to know each other and then there was a foreigner and a, ja a Korean teacher. But I think we've come out with a, with, a, with, with, a, with a result where they try something that might help them in the future. I mm. did it once. I yes. can do it again. Ah, oh, excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you.